It's Peter Patter. Let's get at her. Here's a brand new episode of Ask the Skinny Guy Savior. It's so great to be here with you. Thank you for watching. And uh, you know how to get a hold of me. If you want to see your question posted on the show, go to VinceDelMoneyFanPage.com and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well because I'm going to be uploading these at a more frequent rate and I'd hate for you to miss out on a question that was important, that was important to you. All right, let's rock and roll. Here we go. First question goes to James Calder. He wants to know what's the best way to limit fat gains whilst gaining size. I know so many people that are wondering this as well. All right, great question. Um, I'm kicking the camera here. So the I'm gonna give you two words. Slow bulking. You need to use a slow bulking approach. That's the only way you're gonna do it. And uh, an important thing, an important tip I can give you is to manage what I call the number. The number is how much weight you gain each month. For most guys who start gaining more than five pounds a month, it's only fat. So our goal is to maximize the muscle to fat ratio. So what we do is we manage the number and we start implementing our diet and our training. And if in a month we've gained five pounds, we're right on track, keep doing what you're doing. If you notice that you're at seven or eight pounds after one month, then that's a cue for us to either reassess how we're eating. Maybe you got a little sloppy and you need to tighten things up, or maybe you need to add in one interval session a week. And just that one change might get you back on track to managing the number, which will be whatever number you pick. I would say the number four or five is probably appropriate for the most people. All right, make it happen, buddy. Okay, so Adam wants to know, how do I measure improvement from week to week? I realize timing rest periods and optimizing recovery are key, but with what variables? Okay, it depends on what your goal is. First off, you need to start tracking this stuff. Don't expect to remember all your workout data. You need to put this down on paper so you can actually manage this stuff. Uh, this comes back to what area, what's your ultimate end goal? If you want to get stronger, if you want to improve relative strength, then you're going to need to do workouts that help you get stronger and just simply add more weight to the bar. If you want to increase work capacity, you want to improve, you know, muscle density, you want to do density style workouts where you're doing the same amount of reps and sets and weights, but you're reducing rest periods. So you're doing the same amount of work, but in less time. So it really comes down to your goal. If you want to improve your endurance, you want to focus on standardizing rest periods, but increasing reps. So this all comes back to your goal. Um, just as a side thought for you, you might want to consider buying one of my programs, which organizes all this stuff for you and it'll take all the thought out of it. So all you need to do is execute it. Cause these are the variables that dictate your results. Okay, so Benjamin wants to know, with increasing popularity of paleo eating, do you believe it is possible to eat paleo and follow no-nonsense muscle building? Yeah, you could certainly follow paleo and also do my no-nonsense muscle building program. You're going to end up shredded. I don't know what your goal is, Benjamin. If your goal is to add 20, 30 pounds to your frame, you're going to need carbohydrates. That is certainly going to accelerate the process. And, um, you know, paleo is described as low carb. So I guess, you know, it depends on what you define as low carb. For some guys, low carbohydrates are 300 grams a day. For others, it's 150. For others, it's zero. So it depends what you define as low carb in um, relation to paleo diet eating. So if your goal is to gain muscle, you could follow paleo diet, but to add in some low glycemic carbohydrates to your pre-workout and your post-workout meals and you'll gain size but more at a progressive rate okay so jake wants to know um first off he says good stuff lately i appreciate that by the way he wants to know i've been placing a strong emphasis on increasing arm and chest mass as such i've been taking measurements bi-weekly Although I use the same method each time, I'm not sure what is the correct way to measure arms, chest. Can you help explain? Yeah, this is super easy there, Jake. For arms, I always do it flexed. And for chest, I always do it flexed as well. So chest up, lat spread, and I go around the nipple line. You'll probably need your uh, friend or uh, girlfriend or whoever to do this for you so you can stand tall. Chest out, lat spread around the nipple line. That will give you an idea of your chest uh, girth. And then for arms, like I said, just um, do um, do both arms. Make sure you measure both sides, and just do a uh, uh, you know a front double bicep. 
I'm looking pretty small right now. I'm actually, I haven't been training a lot lately. Just as a side note, I've been um, really busy. I haven't, it's crazy. I haven't been training a lot lately and my nutrition has actually been not that great. And it's because uh, I just had a crazy first half of the year. So I'm kind of in downtime. I'm going to Vegas in uh, a few weeks. Going to go see the Olympia. Hope you're there. If you're there, come by and see us. We're going to be having an insane, insane pool party. Can't tell you where, but uh, if you email me, I'll let you know. Um, for BPAC after the Olympia, it's going to be off the chain. And um, I'm going to use the four weeks in September before the Olympia to get shredded. So anyways, I don't think they look that bad anyways. I can't even sh see, you see here, here, here. If you guys haven't noticed this yet, actually, a lot of people are asking me why I can't, you know, my arms don't grow. I can't fully straighten my left arm. You guys notice that? So he, this is as much as I can do a, uh, this is as much as I can flex my elbow. You see the gap there? I have bone chips in my elbow. I've got to get surgery to get these bone chips removed so that I can get full extension and flexion of my elbow. And once I do, it's game over. I'm gonna bring these arms up. And then, but just to give you an idea, this is this bicep, you see how I can fully flex right in? I have no obstruction in this elbow. So I can shorten my bicep much more on this side. Anyways, it's in my opinion, a legitimate excuse <laughs> for why I can't uh, get my arms to grow because I can't fully shorten them. I can't fully lengthen them. So, and obviously I don't want to smash them and destroy the joint. Um, way off topic there, but anyways, you know, I tend to do that every once in a while. So let's get back to the questions here. Last question is from Aaron Redman. Hey Vince, is training on an empty stomach a good idea for fat loss? I get up at 6 a.m., take BCAs, then at 6.30 a.m. do a kettlebell interval session for 45 minutes. I personally have no problem with this, especially if you feel good while you're doing it. There's certainly individuals who this just isn't gonna fly with. They feel too lightheaded, too weak. Uh, they just, it's a horrible experience. Personally, myself, this is something I've been doing for years. I have a lot of experience with empty stomach cardio, and I personally feel amazing. It sets the tone for my day. I'm motivated to follow my meals the rest of the day. And to be honest, aside from all the science, whether it supports it or not, I personally do better with structure to my day. So having a workout in the morning than a workout at night, it just personally works for my lifestyle uh, because I work from home, it breaks up my day, it motivates me to get on my meal plan for the rest of the day. So um, I have no problem with it. And uh, the only time I would caution you to be careful how much cardio you do when you're doing interval cardio in the morning is when you get really lean. Like I'm talking five, six, seven percent You benefit from probably having a meal first or else you might start risking some muscle loss. Thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me when I see you guys like these videos and you share them with your friends and uh, when I see you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, that's great. You guys know I'm on a mission to help a million people by the year 2020, specifically skinny guys who want to build muscle. So if that's you, if you have a friend, it means a lot to me when you share these videos, you subscribe to the channel because it helps me measure how much closer we're getting to this goal. So thanks for watching and uh, I look forward to doing this with you very soon.